Hello. Happy International Women's Day. Um, my name is Mackenzie Erling, and I head up the client success team here at Pareto. Uh, and I'm Georgie Hunter. Uh, my title is Senior Vice President of Sales in the USA uh, for Pareto. Um, but uh, yeah, just call me boss. <laughs> Head honcho. Uh, you know, on, on a given day. <laughs> uh, so, um, why? I just totally. <laughs> Go on. Why do you think it is important to celebrate International Women's Day? Um, I think to to keep it at the, uh, you know the front of mind that there is been a lot of progress made when it comes to equality in the workplace, but um, we're not quite there yet in terms of, you know, a, a true kind of um, vision where people don't come to uh, any sort of environment with their, their kind of preconceptions about how things should be. Um, and so for me, you know, I, I want to, you know, fly that flag for the next generation. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get into it um, a little bit here, maybe. <laughs> So, um, yeah, why don't you kick us off? Why don't you, uh, what is the most influential piece of advice yeah. that you've had in your career? Um, so I would definitely say, and it's one quote that has uh, stuck with me uh, my whole time at Pareto, since this is my first job ever, Whoa. Um, is ask for forgiveness, not permission. Okay. And why that has always stuck with me out of anything else is that if you want to get to where you want to be in life, mm -hmm. a lot of the times you need to be proactive, not reactive. You need to be taking risks that maybe others are too afraid of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, stick your neck out there. Um, you know, there's so many different sayings that people use, but I think the ultimate end goal is that if you're not going to try it, someone else is going to eventually, mm -hmm. but you want to be that person to shine in the light. And I've always taken that with me every single day when I come and step into the workplace because if I'm not trying new things, um, you know, I'm only hindering my development um, and what I could be doing and my potential. And I think by doing that, you know, I'm doing myself a disservice. So I would rather come to you and ask for that forgiveness. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm still getting potentially the, the end result that I truly want. Um, and so that's always something that's really stuck with me and um, you know, thanks for the great advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I think that's a really good point, you know, you don't want to be, you know, your ripe old age of 85 and <laughs> living with regret, you know, I yeah. wish I'd taken that chance or I, uh, um, yeah, shoot your shot as they say. Um, so really good advice there. And I think on the flip side of that is if you, you, if you put yourself out there, be prepared for the feedback. Um, you know, was I think it's part of this message or this conversation that um, you know to break down biases, we probably have to make sure we understand other people's perspective of us, but not from a sensitive perspective. More from a okay, well, if I know what other people think of me, um, you know, I can choose what advice do I accept and what advice do I maybe park or come back to later, depending on you know your own perspective and, and things like that. So yeah, really yeah, good advice. Completely agree with you. Um, do you want me? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, what message would you like to give to women to break the bias in their careers or everyday life? Would you know what, there's a woman called Meggie Palmer who has a company called Pet Talk Her that is doing some really important work, I think, in this area around, um, you know, uh, salary negotiations for example so her business is coaching women and creating a community where you can they'll help you prepare for these really important conversations in um, in your career so that you go in with more confidence and, and rather than feeling like I deserve this going in and selling why what value you bring that you know means that you know maybe they could could consider um, you know paying you what you're asking for perhaps um, and so for me, the message I think that I want to convey is that there are lots of great organizations out there that, that you should be leveraging. And as women, we need to spread the word around other cool companies that are doing cool things for women. Yeah, no, I really love that. And um, I know that that was actually one that you've shared with me. And, um, it is definitely some really great advice. I think mm -hmm. 
women always have the tendency um, to, you know, essentially just take what is given to them um, versus, you know, strive for, you know, what's better or can they push that envelope? Um, and that would definitely be, you know, my message in everyday life. Don't be afraid to push that envelope because um, you're never going to see that potential. And, um, you know, a lot of the times in, in just in fact right now, especially when you're speaking about salaries, you know, we say that, you know, men usually do ask for more, mm. but why aren't women? Yeah. And what you can do is push that envelope and show, like you said, show the facts, show what you've done, show what you deserve. And, um, you know, if you're coming in and explaining exactly what you can be doing and providing for that company or wherever you're trying to do, um, you know, there, there really is no argument there. Um, and, and people are going to see that as impressive. Um, but hopefully we do get to that point where it's not just impressive that a woman did it. Um, you know, it's, it's the standard and what people expect. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, I, you know, I had that experience myself. One of my team at an annual review asked for more money than I was actually on. I got it. And so, you know, you have these eye-opening moments in your career, and I think, you know, at the time you feel a bit wounded by it, but actually, ultimately, it's a brilliant lesson that maybe you do have to go out and do your research in the market to understand what, you know, you bring to the table and therefore what that's worth. And, um, yeah, some, some great points there, Kenzie. Love it. <laughs> um, is there any mentors or inspirations in your career? Yeah, I think I would, um, I think, you know, your mentors and inspirations can come from anywhere. Um, I think often because this is a work-based conversation, I think about business, but um, totally inspired by the women in my family and, you know, each of them bringing their own style to, to leadership. Um, and, you know, it's with those kind of roots, if you like, that I'm then able to that go out into the world and my mum had a very strong voice herself and it was actually you know what has attracted my dad to her and you know other people um you know I kind of gravitate towards her at events and things like that because she has that kind of ability to be curious but to be outspoken at the same time and have an opinion um and then you know I I, I love watching people like Sarah Blakely youngest self-made billionaire owner of Spanx who you know, her, she's really looking for her authentic voice. She's not coming into leadership trying to do it the way that other people do it, but instead bringing her own kind of um, talents to the, the way she, she kind of engages with um, the next generation. And she has a great thing called the, the Red Backpack Fund, which is um, during COVID, she gave $5,000, which was what she started Spanx with, oh, wow. um, to a whole host of entrepreneurs, including uh, Maggie at, at Pet Talk Her. Oh, yeah. Comes it circle. all kind of comes full circle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, honestly, when you actually brought up um, like women in your life, not just in that professional career, it actually, my first thing I thought about was, so I have four girl cousins that are all way older than me. Mm. And so when it came to growing up, I was, you know, the little one of the family. Everyone was already, you know, in high school and everything like that. But now... I see how successful each of them, and they all do different careers. One's in sales, one's in the film industry, one's a teacher, one's an administrative position. Mm -hmm. And de despite them all being in such different career paths, it has also been such a huge inspiration to me because they're all super successful. And I get constant advice from them. Um, and yeah, I think it, it always is valuable to look not only in the business sector, but also look in your own personal life and who can help strive you to be successful. Yeah, totally, totally true that. So International Women's Day theme this year is Break the Bias. Um, and as a, as a successful woman, <laughs> as a, as a, as a woman uh, in a typically male-dominated profession, what message do you have to young women starting their careers, either in sales or, or in general? <sighs> yeah, uh, good question. I think for myself is never think that you are actually in a male dominated career. Yeah. Um, and reasons why I say that, while yes, I get it can be fairly obvious when you walk into a room, there's more males than females, but if you come in with that mentality right off the bat, you're already one step behind. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, for example, my exact self is when I first joined Pareto, I joined a team of six males and I was literally the only female that came into that um, team. And when I came in, you know, at first they thought, you know, I'm the girl of the team, got to, you know, censor their voices, things like that, can't have the bro talk. But when I came in, I immediately jumped right into, you know, their conversations, didn't mind giving my two cents about what they were talking about. And instantly right then and there, I think I gained a lot of respect. Um, but also it's then helped me to be really successful in my career because I strive to be the best person I could be. Did not matter whether I was competing against a female or a male, um, and which ultimately led to a lot of success in my in just the nine months I started in my career. I, I broke three records in that team going up against a full team of males. Mm -hmm. um, but I think having that mentality and coming in with not even batting an eye what I saw that that was a full male team um, would be my advice to everyone is almost think of it as it should empower you because mm -hmm. you're like, great, I can't wait to show them up or I can't wait to, um, you know, prove that, um, you know, I'm here and I'm here to stay. Um, so I think, yeah, that's my best advice to, to someone, you know, going into the workplace is, you know, never, while it may be hard, don't have those biases because you're already putting mm -hmm. yourself that one step behind. Yeah. I think it's so true. So mindset really dictates any, you know, the way you experience any situation. Uh, I think you've highlighted a, a really good point there. And from my perspective, and I guess, you know, I've got a little more experience than you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously looking very fresh, but you know, but, um, it's just, I think, I don't have any regrets of my 20s at all, but I would say use the time to experiment. I think sometimes if you're ambitious, um, you get your head down, you follow one, a one track, and actually sometimes in you know your 20s will fly by and instead use the opportunity to experience different things meet people your network is part of your power right yeah and um i heard on a podcast recently that actually mentors will seek you out you know if if um you don't have to ask people to mentor you typically you'll find people in your life that offer to do it if they see something in you um, and the reason for that is obviously ultimately they then want to, you know, say, oh, I was there for part of that person's career when they go on to be successful. Um, but let other people recognize in you something that they want to support and be open to that is what yeah. I would say. Very yeah. nice, Georgie. Nice. Um, and then have you faced any barriers in your career due to being a woman? And if so, how do you overcome them? Um, yes, definitely. Um, I, I, I would caveat that though that I'm incredibly lucky. One that I had, you know, a mum who supported people having a strong voice, but um, Pareto being so evenly split male female, we have amazing role models within the business. So I guess you know part of if, if you are finding barriers, maybe make sure you're in a room with other people that are going to support you and um, I guess look and feel like you do. Um, whether you know wherever you sit in the, the wider culture and community that we have today, um, but I think that what I'd like to sh shine a uh, kind of spotlight on is that language matters, and I think one of the things that things that our kind of male counterparts and our allies can do is think about the words that you use to describe females, and it's been said time and time again, so it's not anything new, but um, I've definitely been called emotional definitely been called defensive not sure men get those t those adjectives um, and so instead of aggressive let's use you know assertive you know maybe that's the or, or whatever there, there might be a, a, a you know some better vocabulary even but um, I think if people could think consciously about how they describe women um, and think would I ever say that about you know a man you know that that would be a really good starting point of you know to continue this work yeah I completely agree with you and I will say honestly I'm, I'm super fortunate that I personally haven't had to really overcome anything in the workplace mm -hmm. because I was a woman um, but I think that just goes to show that the the efforts and the strides that have been made by generations before me mm -hmm. are really starting to see those results and, and they are paving the way for you know my generation and I'm sure the generation below me will be even not even talking about this anymore um, yeah. it'll because it'll be 
to the point where it is so equal um, and that no one feels like, you know, it doesn't matter if you're male or female or any gender for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, because I've honestly been super grateful to have, you know, people like yourself um, and other women in our business who never showed that, that bias or that difference. Um, and it didn't matter if you were male or female. Um, so just want to say thank you. Yeah. It's definitely been um, a great ride so far. And I'm really excited to see the success of not only myself, but everyone in this organization and what they can do. Yeah. And I think, you know, you and I are probably incredibly fortunate because within the community yeah. of women, we're white women as well. And I think part of this conversation is we have to support um, you know, sisters from other communities having, like feeling like you do, which is that there has been that progress and um, that opportunity for them to come into work and, and not feel like that they're constantly fighting to, to be seen, to be heard, etc. So still some, still some work generally to be done, but it is good to know that there's some real positive light at the end of the tunnel in terms of, um, you know, women coming into the business community. Could you agree more? Well, thank you, Mackenzie. Thanks, Georgie. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>